burn baby burn the the fire department crews are here to help us with the controlled burn <laughs> We had so much landscaping work done over these past three to four months. Piles were starting to mound and this is the one of the safest ways of dealing with it to be honest. We usually burn like four to eight and then two hours until everything cools down and we can generally be done by 10 p.m. We've got the ingredients for our tiny little asado that we're going to be having with the firemen. All right, guys, so do you remember how a few weeks ago I told you we had hired a crew of four people? They were dealing with the landscaping. They were gonna clear the land, going down from the hotel terraces all the way down to the river. Well, those people have now vanished, poof, without completing the job, and they have left us a bit of a mess. So, how did we end up in the situation? So I'm definitely blaming myself for this one and I'm taking full responsibility because I did not do my due diligence. So typically, whenever I hire someone to do a job, I make sure that I have several references from people in the village who have worked with them, they've had positive experiences, they have good things to say. That is, until I decided to hire a group that I knew nothing about. So basically, the guy that's in charge of the renovation, who's overseeing the whole project, he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I think I can get some guys. I think I know some people. And uh, his first choice wasn't available. So we went with this second choice. And, you know, four guys showed up. Uh, they started doing work. And the idea was that they were going to cut a lot of the shrubbery and like little trees and bush. And then their responsibility was to get rid of everything they were cutting, uh, whether they were going to use a wood chipper to process what they had cut or they were going to take it away in trucks. So they were paid for half of the job up front. They started working, they did some work, sloppy work for a few weeks. And then once it got time to like, okay, you've got to get rid of this now. Like you can't just leave piles of branches all over the property. That's when they disappeared. Or I've heard multiple excuses. They quit, they got fired. I don't know. The thing is, these people aren't here anymore. So now we have been left with this mess and it's like, how are we going to get rid of it? Burn, we're going to have to burn. So it is burn day. Burn, baby, burn. The, the fire department crews are here to help us with a controlled burn. We had so much landscaping work done over these past, what, three to four months? And piles were starting to mound. And this is the one of the safest ways of dealing with it, to be honest. You have the fire department come over. There wasn't, wasn't really practical for us to move these piles like by vehicle, for instance. So this is what we've, we're doing.
All right, guys, so price point, I'm sure you're interested. How much does this cost? Because like I said, a volunteer firefighter department, but they do not work for free. So let me tell you, it is 8,000 pesos per firefighter. On the first day, we had six firefighters. Today, we've got seven. And then I also have to pay 15,000 pesos for the fire truck to come here with water in case things get out of control. So let us do some math. 63,000 pesos. My hair is flying here on the lens. At this time in US dollars is $163. So every time I have to call the firefighter department to do a controlled burn, I spend $163 to burn things. It feels like I'm just burning money, burning cash. But what other option do I have to clear the land and just open and, you know, it's got to be done. We, we kept a lot of wood for firewood, like anything that's a log or that's relatively thick, we're keeping it for the wood burning stove that's also gonna go inside the chalet. So another thing to talk about is how many hours are we burning for? Like what is happening here? So basically, generally the fire department works from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. So they burn four hours and then they stop the burn. They have to wait for the ambers to die and like spray everything with water and stay there for an extra two hours to make sure the fire is truly, truly out before they leave. So they work, they work six hours when they come. These last few days, we've actually been starting the burn at 4 p.m. just because the temperatures have been a bit cooler. It's been really foggy, misty. So the climate is kind of cooperating. Uh, I really appreciate being able to start at 4 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. because I am not on Argentine schedule. I just cannot get used to being awake <laughs> till those hours of the morning. So it's nice when we start at four because we usually burn like four to eight and then two hours until everything cools down and we can generally be done by 10 p.m. So that's worked out really well and hopefully we can continue sticking to that schedule. A ver, mira, te están filmando que va a salir. Comparado con los otros días, saltan pavecita y ya quiere agarrar el piso. Sí. Me falta un helado, no le un tren. Cuidado. Wow. Tienes el don. No diga nada. El don de gasoil. No, no, una gota. Yeah. Well, well. Well, well, we've got the ingredients for our tiny little asado that we're going to be having with the firemen yeah? and the firewomen. Um, so our grill is in big and they've already bought some meat. So we've just added some chori pans. We've got six chorizos actually. And the pan is the bread. And then we've got Coke. So it's going to be fun to enjoy a little meal with them. They've been working hard for quite a few hours now. And this is, this is kind of like the, <laughs> the celebration at the end. A little barbecue. Very Argentine, you know. You work hard and then you grill. Gotta love it. Well, have you ever called uh, the fire department to your home to burn things and then you no, barbecue together? It's usually the opposite, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You're usually calling them to put out a fire, but they're very skilled at what they've been doing here. I mean, we could barely walk here just a couple of weeks ago. So they are helping to clear this area and they've done a great job. They've been working hard, like we've been watching them and, and, and filming them and they, they put in the hours. They deserve that. Great barbecue at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
bien. So this looks very different in the daytime. Where are we? Absolutely. This was the barbecue spot. Yes. Well, it's not the barbecue. In Argentina, we call it asado. Asado. And it's very much, it was the, we did it like campo style. Uh huh. This was the fire. So basically they were taking the embers from here, putting it underneath the grill. And yeah, it was a nice mixed grill. We contributed uh, quite a few chorizos mm -hmm. and pan. And then some of the other guys brought uh, bought different kinds of cuts of meat, beef, pork, and yeah, everyone was really generous. We were all sharing what we bought, and it was a, it was a fun moment. And I can see why they would enjoy having an asado. It's they were working hard for several hours, and it's just a nice, rewarding way to celebrate afterwards because they they got a lot done. Mm -hmm. you know, I, sure did. I was impressed. Um, we're still going to need to do a few more burns to take care of everything, but all things considered, I thought they did really well. Yeah, guys, so this was the culture shock for me when the fire department said, yeah, and we're going to barbecue. I, I really thought they were joking. I thought they were messing with me. But no, after completing the job, the grill came out, the meat was cooked and yeah, they had a fun time. Basically, we started grilling while the other fires were going out. We had to give those a bit of time before, you know, they sprayed them down with water. So that's how we spent the evening. We were probably here till what, like 9, 9.30? And the team would have probably left at around 10 p.m. or so. Like, it was pitch black by then. It is autumn. It's starting to get darker yeah. a lot earlier in the day. So, yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's the, the weather and seasons have like switched like this. We went yes. from like an extreme heat wave right into autumn. Look at what we've got, guys. What do we've got? <laughs> we've got a lot. So obviously this was one of the, the burn sites uh -huh. that, they, that they completed from the last burn. And then we have various kinds of piles. So I'll show you the two different types we have. So this one here is obviously going to be burnt. These are the branches basically. And then the ones that are going to be turned into firewood. So you can see over here that these are basically the, the thicker trees. So the crew that we hired to sort all of this did a really good job of organizing it into different piles. And that's just going to make it easier as we move forward with the processing of everything. Alrighty guys, so I'm bringing you to our newest burn site. Uh, we've had several burn sites around the property. There was like one up top in front of the hotel. Then we had about three down in the in the fruit orchard. Now that we've gained some space, like, you know, as we're clearing these giant mountains of branches and shrubbery, uh, we're gaining space and we've got new areas where to burn. So this kind of looks like a campfire at the moment, just the way they have set everything up in a, in a semicircle. So it's where we're going to be doing our next burn on Tuesday. We had so much rain that we've had to postpone several burns at this point. So we have to keep asking for an extension from the fire safety department. There is lots to do, but the thing is, I'm already starting to notice a difference. So as these giant mounds of branches are being burnt and they're being cleared from the land, everything just looks so much more open, spacious, like everything feels bigger, wider, if you get what I'm saying, because you just have like a, a direct line of sight down to the fruit orchard and well, eventually down to the mountains and that kind of thing. So we're making progress, slow and steady, and that's kind of been our life the last week and a half or so, just burning and barbecuing with the fire department. How's that? Alrighty, friends. So that should sort of give you an idea of what these burns are like, what to expect. 
I'm curious to hear, is this something that's done in your country, in your part of the world? I feel like it's not a thing in Canada, where Sam and I are from. I, I have never heard of a controlled burn and the fire department coming to your property. Um, but anyways, it's I find it really interesting to see how things are done differently across the globe. So I hope this was insightful. This is kind of what we've been doing for the last few weeks, just prepping for the burns and doing the burns because obviously it takes several days to, to gather all this wood and, you know, chop it into manageable chunks. We've got a group of guys who are helping us get this done. And yeah, we're also participating in the burn when it takes place, you know, we help gather branches, that sort of thing. So it's been, it's been an interesting experience. So now you know what we've been up to. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you again to all of our patrons who are helping us out. We've been sharing some behind the scenes photos uh, with them as well. And if you enjoy this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and we'll be seeing you next week with more projects, more renovations uh, around the property here in Argentina. Ta-ta!